IPs, Federal Government Exams, Universities, Polytechnics, Authors, and Rivers Crisis, Assembly declares seats of 27 lawmakers vacant as Amewele Group convenes sitting a day after complex demolition. I am Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. Federal universities, polytechnics, and colleges of education have been taken off the Integrated Personnel Payment System, IPs. The exemption approval reached during the Federal Executive Council meeting at the Presidential Villa in Abuja on Wednesday comes as a relief to tertiary institutions across the country. The Minister of Education, Professor Tayyar Maman, disclosed this while briefing state house correspondents alongside other ministers on the outcome of the Federal Executive Council meeting, noting that this takes immediate effect. According to him, the Council observed that vice chancellors of universities did not need to abandon their work to come to Abuja to process the salaries of their personnel. Happy day for the education sector. Uh, because one of the problems which the vice chancellors, directors, and uh, provosts of College of Education, those managing the tertiary sector in Nigeria, have been complaining about uh, having the subscription to IPPS. You know what IPPS does? and um, which has made uh, recruitment and many other activities of the university relating to personnel very, very difficult. Now today, uh, today's council, at today's council, uh, it has been decided, the president has directed that vice chancellor should no longer uh, or have been taken out of that service. So this is a very, very important development for the vice chancellor that will allow for efficient uh, management of the universities and tertiary education, generally speaking. And then secondly, uh, which is connected to that, before now, when the tertiary education institutions want to make recruitment, they have to run to the office of the head of service, you know, for waiver, for approval, for all that sort of thing. Today, too, the council, through the director of the president, has exempted them from that, that the, uh, they will have nothing to do. They don't have to go to the office of the head of service because it is actually not in their line of... Uh, a supervision. So um, that too, that has been a big bottleneck in management of staff in the universities where uh, they have to apply to that office whenever there are vacancies and have built up a lot of vacancies in the universities and uh, polytechnics and that level of um, service, waiting sometimes for years, for months. And so from this, uh, at this today's meeting, uh, that requirement has been removed. So they will only be guided by what their law uh, prescribes. And then, of course, there are other levels of supervision. The NUC at the Federal Ministry of Education is there. You know, so that's, uh, that's a very big relief for the universities and uh, we sincerely hope uh, these measures will be responsibly reciprocated by the institutions. Joining us is former ASU Chairman Professor Rufus Olowe. Prof, good to have you on Plus Politics. Thank you very much. 
Prof, what would be your initial response to the two concessions made by the Federal Executive Council yesterday to what has been ASU's uh, age age long agitations? Well, thank you very much. This is actually a welcome development because the ASU have been pressed on this matter for a long time. You must see as opposed to up down on uh, autonomy. IPPS, as you see, is an encouragement to the autonomy of the universities. You know, for everything to be done separately at a budget, that means that each university government council or university management, they have no control over what uh, over the staff and the movement of the staff. In fact, we have seen that this army period is one of the very good to promote the issue of uh, ghost workers. There are some people who say go and appear there. They are not even they, they, they might not even, because they are operating on the system, whereby they might not even know some of the people that are even operating the system. We have seen that they are even encouraging more of those workers. But what they are trying to eliminate is what that thing is encouraging. So there is no way they may be able to spend the proper day and the issue of the salary and wages of a woman of their staff. Without the proper control by the university management of the institution. Uh, uh, prof. So it's a serious agreement to the autonomy of the university. And the amount, this IPPS has also considered a lot of interests in order to spread out of our conditions. Actually, universities is not just a teaching institution, it's also professional research and confederation of ideas among various universities. The issue of IPPS. And we went to of our colleagues for even going on sabbatical within Nigeria. This idea is really affected because anybody that goes to do that all that good sabbatical and any further investing among them will not be paid. And sabbatical is very, very, it's very essential for the good of research of every institution. No institution in, in any university all over the world has monopoly of London. You need cross fertilization. Ideas. People, the exchanges are promoted. People can go from one university to another. These are some of the techniques of universities that cannot be compared to IDPS. There's no way the IDPS can work for any institution in Nigeria. And you can see, ever since the IDPS started, it has started the growth of so many universities in terms of their, their staff and, and the academic exchange within, within Nigeria. So, by the government, the government now removing this thing is a real record development. It's a record development for uh, uh, Prof. Is a welcome yes. development, but it automatically also places a degree of, uh, of responsibility and accountability on, on uh, associations such as ASU. And the reason is that uh, people and journalists will be looking forward now to seeing the integrity of governance in our universities. Because you must remember that it was a regime of abuses that ultimately, uh, that ultimately precipitated the idea of the IPPS, notwithstanding the fact that it was not done in a manner that was very reflective of the needs and the imperatives of university governance. How would you respond to that? Yes, 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 yes that's fine. Every, either because we don't have a good governance in place in many of our institutions, with, with proper corporate governance in place, we can check all these for accountability issues. So, this is, each institution will be able to regulate itself. Okay? No, 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 our governing council will be able to do their work of oversight. The fact that the the uh, 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 is not the one to check me that. I mean, that's why the government put governing council there. 
And if we have a proper corporate governance legislation, this is what I expect government to do now. I mean, we should have a corporate governance legislation so that we know who and what is what. We should be able to check this accountability issue. And uh, so the, the organization that we have a lot of work to do now, okay, to put all this corporate governance in place, maybe the financial reporting council, okay, I believe that trying to do something on that, okay, so I mean to be able to put accountability in different institutions. So each institution should be able to uh, do this on their own. We know what guys say, corporate governance regulation in place, they will comply with it. And with good uh, 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 governing council, okay, then they tend to do everything properly in each, every institution. Provided the government itself will not be interfering, as well as well in some of these uh, governing council issues. Once there's, a once there's a regulation in place that everybody is supposed to comply with, the government council member knows their role. There is an approval limit. The VC uh, knows their role. I mean, everything is well properly defined. Uh, properly uh, defined. Prof. Okay. I believe the issue of accountability can be checked in Nigerian university system. Prof. It is because there is no COVID governance in place now. In many of these institutions, that's why maybe we are having a catalytic issue. Okay? But this thing can be done. But uh, we, we have, because of that, we are not erode, erode the autonomy of these universities. This is going to affect the performance of the universities. Thank you. Uh, Prof, uh, you will agree with me that. Um uh, in so much as the theoretical presentation of uh, corporate governance, uh, as, you, uh, as you've just articulated, sounds very convincing, you will agree with me that the universities, uh, the tertiary institutions, not only the universities, the tertiary institutions, in some respects, are suspects of, uh, one does not want to talk about it, Indeed, there was one particular occasion that a, a, the chair of the governing council of a particular university's board came on, on national TV and called the vice chancellor, a vice chancellor a thief. And he said he had tapes to that effect. And you know what? The guy was relieved for investigation and was reinstated. And on his reinstatement, we had even members of ASU jubilating with him from the gate of the university. So uh, one is sitting there now and, and one is thinking, you know what? It does seem in some respects too that ASU that should be a thought force of accountability holding the management, the, the constitutional management of the university to account Sometimes it does seem that there is, uh, there is a, a degree of complicity and things are done so shoddily that even when it's obvious to the open eyes that, you know what, things are not properly done, uh, ego comes into it and you don't want outsiders to be involved. One hopes that will not be, that will not be uh, the direction we'll be going after these uh, victories for us. Okay, I... If I get you right, and uh, that means you are referring to especially what happened in Battle of Lagos, whereby the chairman of the Governing Council uh, claimed that the BC and uh, committed some atrocities. And, 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 am, I, am I getting you right? Yes, sir. Yes, me. Actually, I myself, I. I did not completely agree with uh, Asu, the way Asu went about it. Although what, what, what they are trying to address, I believe they should not have gone the way they went, because Asu is involved also preaching against accountability. But what Asu is was after another time was that the chairman of government council did not follow the process. That was their claim. Uh, 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 the deep water was not for you. Uh, 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 prof, right. prof. Uh, to, be honest, to be honest with you, some of us in the world of uh, 
in the world of journalism and uh, you know analysis of events, we know that the very reason why it did seem that the VC and the the ego trippers of Unilag got away with murder was because the person concerned, and I'm not mentioning names, there, the person concerned had his own had his own uh, you know uh, uh, reputational baggage. If it was not for the fact that that person had his own reputational baggage, what happened in Unilag was indeed a disgrace to tertiary education management in Nigeria. If somebody could, if somebody had the temerity to come on national TV and call me a thief, I will litigate. And I kept, you know, I kept telling people that if that VC did not go ahead to litigate, it would be an indictment, not only against himself, but indeed against Asu that was celebrating with him when they, when they reinstated him. And I have, I, I, I concede, I concede the fact, sir, that even you said you weren't too happy with it. And one is just praying at this juncture that the management of universities will not be going in that direction with a, some perceived degree of complicity by the local ASU, uh, ASU leadership. That is the only thing that the point I'm trying to make, sir. But the, I, I, the, you know, on, on, on this particular matter, we didn't, we didn't totally agree. There was division among us. Because as I said, my, my, own, my own point around that term was the fact that the, we should have allowed the governing council to have their way. If the, if the governing council says somebody is uh, corrupt, the person should be the one to go and defend themselves. Okay? The person should also be the one to defend itself. But the government also added to the whole public. Because the government should have been uh, try to interfere with the autonomy of the university. There's already an autonomy act that gave the, uh, the government council, okay, the power to be the one to recruit whoever is going to be the vice chancellor. So they are also the one to also determine which we remove. But the government itself is interfering the whole process. The government, so, a lot of people, a lot of issues are involved in that matter. So, okay, what, uh, prof. So, what, what, what is very necessary now? What is very necessary is to have a good corporate governance in place now. Uh, prof. So that we uh, 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 must celebrate this kind of thing in future. Uh, I said, Prof, I must celebrate your candor uh, because uh, for so long a time I've never seen somebody this high up in ASU saying that at that point, he or she was a bit... But having said that, to wrap up now, I must just ask you this question. Now that after, you know, after long-suffering, after uh, abuses, after uh, deniers, ASU has gotten uh, this victory for the management of tertiary institution in Nigeria because ASU was the most steadfast, uh, especially on the issue of the over-centralization of the, of the remuneration uh, uh, system. Uh, now that ASU has gotten it, uh, some of your members who felt that you, you people were just being unduly obstinate. Uh, how would you go now? I, I, I guess if the rain falls, it falls on everybody. It's going to be a general blessing, is it? Am I, am I still on? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, the 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 my 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 comment on that is that the yes the the what 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 the government has done now is part of the things ASU wanted. Okay, it's part of the demand of ASU, and uh, so it's like uh, it was good that the government itself saw it. He saw that this. This uh, RTPS might not really work for the universities. So the, that's why I say they work on the government and, uh, and uh, it's going to be well embraced by action. Okay? 
So uh, we also appeal to the government because you know, since they have addressed one of these demand of ASU, the government should also, as a father, take another look at some of the demand of ASU that led to the last strike in 2022. So, because what ASU was demanding that time also was, it, was fair. Thank you very much, Prof. We really, we really appreciate your virtual presence on the program today. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we wish you all the best. We're going to short break now. When we're back, we go on the second segment of the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.